Welcome everybody to the Genesis Mindset. Today we have another LP analysis video from within the void, from within dysnomia, and actually from the place where one becomes one with the void. And this is actually really quite profound that I'm learning about these things quite literally from this place. Like we, the concept of this meditation is, well, the truth is that everything comes from the universe. So that infinite universe emptiness, if you take away all the people, if you take away everything on earth, if you take away the earth itself, all the stars, all the planets, that universe emptiness still exists. So that universe emptiness is filled with a consciousness. And this is what we call God, the universe emptiness and the consciousness, haha, <laughs> the universe emptiness mother and the consciousness father is God. Together it's God. And so everything that is created by that, that is the creator and everything that's created within it is the created. So that's what this is. So when I talk about the void, I'm, I'm talking about the emptiness. So for me, this is really all just quite profound. And this meditation method is also really quite profound. It's not just about sitting and meditating. It's about meditating all the time. So I'm meditating right now as I'm doing the action. I'm following the method. It's all about eliminating the false self inside of the mind. Because even in the latest neuroscience, in the latest quantum mechanics, studies are showing that humans are living inside of a hallucination there's a there's a famous ted talk that talks about basically a hallucination and i just want to i just want to go over this because this is all very very interesting to me it might not be interesting to you but it's interesting to me so even this card here this card here so this is my wise card now if i give this to you you might go oh awesome i can actually use it to spend something with i know it's a card if i give this to somebody in the Amazon rainforest, they're going to look at it and go, what is this? They're not going to know anything about it. They have no concept of money through a card. So they're going to look at it and they're going to go, huh? 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 They're going, huh? Huh? What is it? Why? They don't have a picture of it. We have pictures of this being something that you spend money with. And now if you give it to a baby, a baby is also same, same concept, right? If you gave this to me 20 or rather 30, 38 years ago, I wouldn't know what it is. I don't have that concept. Nobody told me what it was. I haven't taken that picture. So it's that same concept of the allegory of Plato's cave. So once we take that picture, that's how we start seeing the world. So is it the truth? No, absolutely not. We're not seeing the world as it is. We only see the world as we've recorded into our mind. So this is that picture world. So all very interesting stuff. Like I said, all the neuroscience, all the quantum mechanics is leading to the fact that this human mind is a false self. It's a false universe. Uh, it's a false self. The real mind is the universe mind. And that is that emptiness and consciousness. That's the real mind. So behind that picture world, when we become that, that's how we actually should be living. That's living as the truth. That's salvation. So, okay. So with that, the LPs today, we're going to go over the big dog, Maria Rahel and Smoking Gorilla. So the reason why I'm going over these two in particular, obviously Maria Rahel is the one that's created this whole ecosystem. So to be honest, I probably should have looked at Maria's last week, but in any case, I'm looking at it now. And Smoking Gorillas is someone that has uh, replicated how the Atropa ecosystem first started. And I know that Maria has said that the way that Smoking Gorillas has done it is very good. So I'm going to look at those two. Then I'm also going to start to show you how I've started to set my mine up. I've only just started to bring charts up now just to start to show you guys this process because I feel like if I take if I take you through this process step by step as I'm also going through it because like this channel is all about I'm also learning on the fly. I know a lot of I know it's like a big puzzle piece and like let's just say this is the complete understanding of what it means to be a liquidity provider. I know I know all these little pieces but and the connections in between and I'm learning things on the fly and Sonny's teaching us all the time. We're doing it. We're doing a, an LP exercise with Sonny at the moment with Gaon. So we're, we're doing, we're, we're really learning. So I'm also learning. So I've actually just for the first time started to bring my charts up and just for the first time, I'm, I'm going to be looking at those and I'll tell you how I've set up my first liquidity pool and why I did it in that way. So again, hopefully over time, as I start to uh, go through the process with you, it will become clearer to me and it will become clearer to you about the power of liquidity providing and what it means to actually do it because there's so many different kinds of strategies. So this is all just a learning process. So with that, let's get straight into it. Now, Maria Rahel. So I haven't got, I think perhaps, so Maria has got 105 holders. So the holders obviously is the liquidity pools plus the people that actually own the tokens and smoking gorillas has 62. So this was at the time of doing the analysis. So with smoking gorillas, I did every single one of his pools 
And with Maria Rahel, I think I stopped after page two because I want to just have kind of similar kind of data. And if you start to look here, we have, uh, for example, Maria Rahel has, oh, Maria Rahel, 3.33 rod. I'm going to have to do something about that. Maria, I'm coming for you, formerly known as Bay. So Maria Rahel uh, obviously owns majority of the supply. So if the total tokens is 5,593, he owns 5,551. And Smoking Gorillas, on the other hand, very similar setup, 5,390. But he only owns 163. So he's actually distributed all of his tokens. So what I've done with Maria Rahel is basically I have taken, I've done a pie chart with all of it. So you'll see how he's kind of set it up at the moment. And then a pie chart with without the Maria Rahel because the way that I'm imagining it is he's setting all of this up and then he might start distributing those tokens throughout the liquidity pools in the same way that Smoking Gorillas has done it. So basically Smoking Gorillas has distributed the majority of his token su supply. So one thing uh, that will uh, that I have noticed is I don't I don't really know much about one swap. I'm gonna have to look into one swap, but I've seen uh, one swap is bonded quite largely with one swap. I noticed that with surfacing as well. I think surfacing's oh actually yeah surfacing's top surfacing's top pool was one swap. A one A eco I, I imagine this would have been Sunny's doing. So Sunny probably wanted to be at the very top of Maria's. Um, Maria's liquidity pool. So he's got the biggest liquidity pool with Maria Rahel. And then Maria has then started to create with the Sue uh, uh the Maria Rahel rod. We've also got Mr. Stew. So I imagine Stewie would have wanted to be nice and high. And then affection. So affection also nice and high. So this is something that he was really emphasizing that affection should be really nice and high and bonded, bonded one to one. But I'm not too sure about bonding at one-to-one -one, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why I've done it differently, whether it's right or wrong. I'm not 100% sure. As you go through and analyze this, you're going to see these unnamed tokens. So I, I thought these were actually tokens, but then I kept seeing the same repeated thing again and again. And I noticed Freedom77, for example, had unnamed tokens. So once I actually started to see it multiple times, I've in the past, I'd seen it maybe twice and I thought, oh, okay, it's just a V1 and a V2 and it's actually called unnamed token, but it's not. And so the way that I actually found that is I copied, copied and pasted the token address, went to deck screener, and uh, copied the, the address, went to deck screener, pasted it, and then it came up with, for example, web. Web was one of them here. So this is a little spider web and it's, and the, the so it's actual, its actual name is the logo and the ticker is web. So for example, I imagine this is probably why unnamed token doesn't show up because it's maybe a random signal. No, that, that shouldn't be right. But yeah, the block explorer is not all that great and it's quite, it's quite slow uh, as well to update things. So just keep that in mind. So, so here we go. So let's actually take a look at these on the sheet. So first of all, I'll show you. So this is Maria Rahel. So you can see the majority of the supply 99% of the supply is still in Maria's wallet and the rest the rest is tiny little bit in liquidity. So as you can see here, Maria owns 99% of the... Yeah, I mean, you can see these numbers on the Block Explorer, but I like to see it visually as well. That's the purpose of this for me because I'm a, I also like to learn visually. So now if we take away Maria's wallet, so this is Maria Rahel's with minus the wallet, we can start to see the distribution here. So... 19% with Sunny the big dog. So I imagine Sunny would have done this. We got one swap, Mr. Stu, Maria Rahel. So 10%, 10%, 10%, 11%. And then we got Affection. So Affection's another big pool. And then Atlas is another big pool. And then it starts to cascade down. So there's there's kind of like this um the distribution of the the distribution of the liquidity pools is. I'm sure set up in a very specific way. Now, how much of these Maria has actually created? I don't know. Obviously, Maria would have created the Sue cone and the rod because they they belong to his wallet. I imagine also he would have definitely have created affection. I imagine maybe one swap as well, um, because I don't actually know who owns one swap, but then these other ones, I imagine Sunny would have done that, Stu would have done that, uh chat A1A, that would have been Sunny as well. And some of these other ones, I don't know if it was Maria or somebody else. So you can start to see this, this cascading of the liquidity pools. And this cascading of the liquidity pools means if there wasn't, basically, it will get dragged the most by A1A Eco because it's the largest liquidity pool. And then one swap, Mr. Stew, and then Maria Rahel, Sue Cone, Maria Rahel, Rod. 
So uh, as these as these move, it will move the Maria Rahel token as well. Now, let's have a look at this. So this one is very similar as well in the sense that there's three large pools and then smaller pools. And what I really like about this is this is very similar to the way that Coexist was set up. Not Coexistence, Stephen, Coexist, which has a tax. Uh, I have done videos on that, so you can check that out. That's also still under experimentation. I'm, I'm still learning about that. And just by doing this process, it started to open my mind up. Actually, I'll, I'll stop this share for just a second. So as I've started this process of creating and analyzing these liquidity pools, and learning more as I go, BHP Source did some great posts to one of my, uh, did some great tweets to one of my posts on on X, and really again made more things just more clear to me. Some things were like, okay, yep, I get that, but then the, again, it's like this puzzle piece. So him just saying this one little word, just like ah, okay, now it connects this piece of information with this piece of information, and ping, now I understand. I had this little realization, this little enlightenment. So. It's also helping me understand what how coexist is working because I was late to the game. A1A was already done, B2B was done, uh, Steady Pup, PLS Pup was already done. There was all these ecosystems that were already built out. So I was kind of late to the party. And so with this dysnomia, with the LAU token, so if you want to create an LAU token, definitely go and check this out and just get started. Just get started and start learning. I think this is going to be the mega alpha. This can be your own bank. And that was the purpose and the objective of Coexist token. And now Coexistence Steven, which is the LAU token, this can also be a bank. This is the whole objective of it. And so one of some of the little tricks that we've started to started to play together with the liquidity pools have also started to help me learn. So the interesting thing that I learned about Coexist, well, I, I just did it in, I like to do things in threes, the Holy Trinity. So you have mother, father, and then you have the created. It's the Holy Trinity. So the, the mother, the father, the son, the soul, the spirit. Uh, what is it? The other thing, the Holy Ghost, Holy Father. There's there's always there's always threes, right? So in any case, uh, I had three large liquidity pools and then smaller ones. And I just did that uh, just because I felt like this would be a good way to do it. So it's really cool that Maria Rahel has basically uh, given props to Smoking Gorilla. And I know that my liquidity pools on Coexist look very similar to this. And I'm probably going to I'm probably going to do this for Coexist token as well at some point. So um, the objective of that is it, it's a tax with PDI. So, but yeah, I have had some enlightenments about, ah, oh, what I can actually do with buying into the token, uh, buying into the liquidity pools and then adding into the liquidity pools. I was looking at it in a very one dimensional way, but now just by doing this process with Sunny and some of the lads, it's really started to open my mind up, engaging in dysnomia chat, engaging with the affection chat. So definitely would encourage just starting to learn. And hey, like I'm really spending very, very minimal amount of time. Like at the moment, the schedule is so intense. I, I'm on uh, I'm on the dinner break at the moment and I'm using a borrowed computer so I can do this video for you guys. So yeah, like if I can do it in these little small gaps, if you really want to learn, you definitely can. So just take it as it comes. So, so as he's done, so he's got bear as his biggest and affection and then wrapped pulse. So bear is a great choice so bear is a fantastic choice because bear is very volatile so if this was a tax token bonding it so heavily with bear this is something that i did volatility is good so then the volatility will flow through here now even though his liquidity pools has 20 percent of his pools with bear it doesn't necessarily mean all like it's still in compar comparatively to, to the bear liquidity pools, his liquidity pool is going to be so low because there's going to be so many liquidity pools to teddy bear where his might only be actually like 0.00001% supply of bear. So even though it's a good choice, uh, in a way, um, it's, a, it's an intelligent choice, but at the same time, you got to weigh these things up with how this is going to compare with the rest of teddy bear because teddy bear then is going to, as teddy bear moves, and the arbitrage bots start working their magic, his is at the very bottom of the food chain. So you really have to keep those things in mind as well. So Teddy Bear, number one meme coin on Pulse Chain. It's going to be the number one meme coin on Pulse Chain, in my opinion. So Affection, he's also bonded it with Affection. So again, just like Maria, Maria was very high up. So, uh, oh, yeah, okay. So Maria, Maria was reasonably high up with Affection. He has done the same. So he's bonded it with Affection. And what he did... So Smoking Gorillas actually did do it one-to-one, -one, but then as he minted out his tokens, 
he started buying into the liquidity pool and then this this creates the as he starts buying buying i think he said he bought the affection with so basically the way that maria wants us to do it he started buying the affection with his uh with his token and then this fattens up the liquidity pool and then as he's buying the infection and he's minting out his tokens then he's adding both of those tokens back into the liquidity pool this is some this is where the the enlightenment came for me with uh d- realizing this this logic with coexist tokens so this is something that i'll be doing so again yeah keep an eye out on coexist and the tax tokens are I, I i i still think that the tax tokens are a freaking awesome idea so shout out to sunny for that idea very unique idea even though it's not sharia compliant and it's very anti maria rahel's uh kind of logic i still i still think uh sh- i still think the tax tokens are brilliant um okay so wrapped pulse uh, I think maybe Maria Rahel, did Maria have any wrapped polls? Some people were saying do, uh, so Maria did do wrapped polls. Some people were saying do wrapped polls last because as you do wrapped polls, as soon as you bond it to wrapped polls, you're going to get a price to your token. So very interesting that basically half of his liquidity is in these three tokens. And then we start to scale down. So he's basically got very uh, sort of maybe the next what is that 10 or so liquidity pools he's got between two to five percent and then the rest is between zero and one percent so very small liquidity pool so he's he's also got a lot of tokenized assets which is really interesting and what i liked about his as well is so he's got a lot of tokenized assets and he's got these tokens called press play press rewind press stop press repeat press skip so what I'm starting to see is there's kind of this, this is also giving me ideas for what I'm going to be doing with my token. So he's got tokenized asset, tokenized asset, tokenized asset. So it's really making me think, ah, I could I could set up the liquidity pools for coexistence, Stephen, where the highest liquidity pool, for example, might be with affection. And then the next one might be a tokenized asset, which is linked to my uh, YouTube playlist on dysnomia or a tropa. And then a YouTube uh, link to what is a tropa, and then you know uh, I could have a I could bond it with this to- or I could just the I could just bond it with this token, or just buy some of or send it to send some to this token. So now this is going to be uh, so then when people click here, it's going to be press play. So press play, and then you know uh, playlist. I could even I could even create a token that says our uh, YouTube playlist, and then put it there, and then uh, learn about a tropa, and then put all the Atropa tokenized assets here. So the blockchain is actually communicating something in the way that the liquidity pools are set up. So this this kind of triggered that idea with, with me as I started to uh, analyze uh, Smoking Gorilla's liquidity pools. So, uh, and then also he's got affection here as well. So maybe one of them is uh, a V2 and one of them is a V1. I imagine that's exactly what it would be. So very, very cool. So yeah, just by doing this in the first one that I did, so you can go check out that video, but... Yeah, the first one that I did looking at a couple of these boys. So just just some different ways of uh, representing it. Uh, what do you guys think? Which one do you prefer? Do you prefer this this kind of a this kind of a I think it's called a pinwheel chart, and then this is a and the other one is a pie chart. So which one do you prefer? I think I prefer the pie chart personally. It makes things a little. It's a much of muchness, but the pie chart just looks cleaner. Uh, oh, actually, here we go. We got the void. We got the void in here creating these creating these liquidity pools. So maybe, maybe I like this one. I mean, if they're both very similar, I kind of, I kind of like how these ones actually also, uh, how it lays out a little bit cleaner than, than what this, this, this does, because it does these little offshoot arrows, uh, when it gets a little bit thinner, I prefer just not, just to not have it there, but yes, the void is created in the void. So yeah. And this, and I kind of like how it goes around like this. It looks, it looks pretty neat. So I might continue to do it in this way for the dysnomia. I don't know, but what do you guys think? Any preferences, you know, as an architect, I'm always looking at these things when it comes to uh, appearances. So let's actually have a look at the coexist token now. So now, uh, so the re- okay, so the re- so what I ended up doing was, so because the first liquidity pool with coexist, where's where's my coexist? Where are you, baby doll? Okay, so coexist and Stephen. The very first liquidity pool was Sunny, so he created with A one A eco, and as you can see here, twenty two, A one A, to point five, coexist and Stephen. So what I ended up doing was taking the ratio that he's he basically his token 
set the ratio. So I wanted to match the ratio for his token with any liquidity pool that I did. So basically what it ended up working out to be is coexistence Steven ended up being about 40 to $45 a token. And so my token supply is uh, very small. So when I created, so at the moment it's 129. When I created it, I think it was maybe maybe 29 or 30 ish or something. Actually, let's just take a look. So by the way, I would definitely strongly encourage you guys to have, uh, where is it? Um, give me a second, dysnomia, uh, new contracts. So then I, this is how I can quickly find it. So coexistence, why? New contracts, why is it no results? Why is it, uh, why is my internet disconnected? Huh? What? Why is it doing this? Um, oh, that's a trope of what a dumbass. Okay, here we go. Okay, so coexistence, just to see. Okay, so it started with 29. Oh, wow. So, okay, 29 token supply it started with. And because it's created by random number generators, token supply 7,165 for this triple, uh, for the five A's, uh, 4,330, 1699. 951 um 208 so mine seems to be one of the lower the lowest so yeah wow okay extremely low <laughs> hi i'm crispy <laughs> with a poo symbol indefiniteness oh that's a sick that's a sick ass symbol that's killer 1122 two, you're kidding look at that it's like a very spiritual you got the you got yeah, that's that's pretty dope, man. That is that's freaking dope. Uh, te oh, Telerik. Okay, that's even lower. So that's ten. So yeah, the random number generator creates these random tokens. Token, and then we don't know what the how much you can actually mint out of the tokens. This is the thing. So uh, until it's fully minted out, you won't actually know. So because my token supply was so low and Sunny's was so high. Hey, Vivian, what's up? Because mine was so low and Sunny's was so high, uh, he would have bonded it in accordance with how much my token supply was. So very cool. Um, and we got mindfulness. Let's where I want to just go to this as well. There's some really cool. Oh, actually, where's maybe go to Vivian. So this is something that Vivian's Vivian pointed out. Uh, where was Vivian's now? Uh, da, 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 karma. Pulse PP. Hi, I'm crispy. Indefiniteness. Telerik. It was oh, broke boy. Um, Viv's, Vivian's was uh x z x z x so you can make as many as you want by the way uh yesterday paul the crypto was making some um and yeah, he made about five or six different ones so you can make a whole bunch of different ones and then the one that you want to end up using i mean some people did this just to try and get a good token supply it seems like a low token supply uh, based on what i was reading in somewhere in the in the chat log it seems to be very uh, <laughs> uh now Vivian was telling me about uh, something about the the chances of the token address being something very special, but maybe it's there's a different one for Vivian. No clue, mate. Yeah, I don't have any clue. But one thing that I did want to say about mine that I noticed was, where is it? So uh, I got a triple eight, triple eight right in the middle. I don't know. Um, I think triple eight's like a symbol of wealth or something, isn't it? In spiritual things, I don't follow numerology or anything like this, but triple eight, I think. So I'm like, oh, there we go. We got the peace symbol. So anyway, all right. So yes. So basically, what I ended up doing. So because Sunny's right. So if I had if I had done it to Pulse Chain, uh, if someone had created coexistence Stephen to Pulse Chain, it would give a dollar value. But because it hasn't been done yet, there's no dollar value, so it's just proportional. So when I went to go check the liquidity pool on Pulse X just to see, I noticed that one, uh, yeah, basically I, I checked the price of uh, Sunny's A1A Eco to one of mine. And it basically showed that one of my tokens is between 40 and $45. So then what did I do to create? <laughs> hey, Sunny, we're talking about you, my boy. And look at this, we got 420, 420. So shout out to you, Sunny. That's Sunny's little... He's he's got his he's got tons of burnt supply and uh, four twenty burnt supply in in his favorite uh, Atropa ecosystem tokens. 
Uh, and then Mal ended up creating the second one. And then I created my first one, which was with affection. And so what I ended up doing was I created it to, I, I basically went got the price of my token, which was $40 a token to affection. And so I didn't bond it one-to-one. -one. I bonded it in accordance to the price of affection. So it ended up being, and this is what I, this is what I especially loved about it. It was basically one coexistence token to 13,333 uh, affection. So I was like, yep, we're sticking with that. I don't, I'm not going to do the one-to-one. -one. I'm just going to experiment with this. If this is wrong, my apologies, but I think it's, I mean, I'm just following the logic. If I had done it one-to-one, -one, then the R bots would basically have just like, just demolished this liquidity pool when it got created with, uh, with Sunny's, uh, because of Sunny's A1A. So in any case, when you when I'm starting to look at this, so now look at this. I mean, this is like, oh wow, I can I, sh I can really start to buy up affection because affection is so cheap compared to coexist. So I can buy up affection, and I could buy it up to the creation. So I could pump this up just by buying into it. And this is this is start of uh, part of the idea and the logic behind it. So what what we what we did here was we took a low market cap. So Sunny suggested this, and we just followed. So we took a low market cap. So it has. It doesn't, we can basically move the price a lot. And what this is going to do as this starts to pump, it's going to pump our tokens as well. And it's not about taking, for me then, it's not about taking liquidity out of Goan so I can, or taking liquidity out of uh, Coexistent Steven through Goan. It's about Goan now creating this fake market cap and creating this kind of backing asset to Coexistent Steven, which is going to, it's just going to be like another layer to the to the ecosystem. That's how I'm kind of thinking about it. And yeah, like the fact that it's such a low market cap, we can pump it to, oh, get out of here. 414, liquidity is 414. You know, more synchronicity. So I've done I've done it to Goan. And this is to Mal. So Mal actually created this one. Uh, so yeah, he created this. So he this is from this is the League of Legends, uh, Malphite, I believe. Um, so he he created this pool. So it's a little bit more dynamic. So as we start to create more of these pools now, this is the so some of these aren't showing on the block explorer yet. So at the minute, it's just these. It's just uh, Mal and uh, the A one A. So to A one A. So even even this. Yep, so I could start to buy some of Sunny's tokens, which I probably will, and add to liquidity. What? Ah, wow. What? Oh, that's a 70x. Why? What? That's huge. Okay, wow. So there's this like I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to start experimenting with this and start buying into that pool. And what I and so as I buy into this pool with the coexist token, I'll buy into this. It'll start pumping Sunny's A1A eco. Well, you know, comparatively pumping it because I'm third on the liquidity liquidity providers list for Sunny's for Sunny's token. So I can start to pump it with coexist token, and I'm gonna start doing that. And I'm gonna see as I start buying it what's gonna happen to A1A eco, and what's gonna actually happen is between all the different. Uh, let's let's start getting so between all the different liquidity pools. If I start buying into this this liquidity pool, it's going to trigger all the other liquidity pools that are connected to it as well. And so all the liquidity pools are going to get triggered just by my buying. Oh, we're going to start to see a little. I'm going to do this for the wow. I mean, it seems to be flowing quite nicely. So I'm going to continue with this. What do we got? The circle of life here. So it's going to trigger all the other liquidity pools. So hang on, we have to get that a little bit, a little bit. No, anyway, I'm not going to sit here all day and do that. And then you've got bigger liquidity pools as well. And they're all going to get triggered as I start buying into this. And so the ARB, by, by triggered, I mean, as, the, as, as Coexist moves the price of A1A, it's also going to move it in all the other liquidity pools. And the arbitrage bots are going to close the gap between all of them. Oh, man, how good is this? Look at this. It's really just like... Oh, the little liquidity pools. This is so good. Oh, this is almost like really quite perfect, to be honest. So, yeah, there we go. The wave is going to go through and trigger all the liquidity pools. And then it's going to shift the price of A1A. And I'm going to experiment and have a look. Okay, how much is it actually shifting the price of A1A? And then not only that, it's going to pump A1A. It's going to pump all these others because 
Sunny has over 300 liquidity pools, so it's going to pump all the other tokens. And this is how we all work together to win together. So this is this is the real beauty that I'm starting to see unfold with Dysnomia and the LAU contract. So I will leave it at that. I think that's been some even good live enlightenments for me as I've gone over that. So the next one that I'll be doing is Asgard, and it's called Make the Grade. So Ben Popfin said, if you want to know about how to set these up properly, just follow what Maria was saying. And Maria was, I think Maria basically made Asgard, make the grade. And Ben Popfin is very good at reading the chat log. He really understands the chat log really, really well. Probably probably almost better than anyone that I know. Um, and basically he said that is a good one to look at. So the next video that I'm going to be looking at is make the grade. So I'm going to do a deep dive on make the grade and see the liquidity set up on that and see if we've learned anything. So we've got part one, part two, then we're going to go part three, which is make the grade. If I had known, I probably would have done make the grade first. But anyway, this is the way that it's flowed out. So we've kind of like scrambled in the dark. We've scrambled around in the void. We've been enlightened. We've had God's consciousness seep into us. And now we're going to go full into make the grade for the next video. So with that, take care.